Hey everyone, welcome. I decided to do a live stream today. All of y'all are voting right down the middle between 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Today, I just happen to have time right now, so I wanted to drop in and see you guys. Hey Debbie, hey Maddie, how are you both? And I'm not sure how long I'll talk. Um, I think I'm getting a cold or something. So I've been um, self-medicating with uh, Chinese medicine. Luckily I had the perfect herbs at my disposal and everything I needed. So I've been taking care of myself since yesterday and like eating the right foods. But we'll see how long my chi allows me to talk. Um, so in my story I was saying to you guys that um, I wanted to start doing live readings for you guys this week. I haven't done them in so long. I haven't had the bandwidth to do so because I've been at fairs reading for tens of people per weekend and um, and just with my regular client work it was like I can't even I can't um, but I'm feeling really good so I thought that I would um, do that and it seems like quite a few of you are joining so I think we might be able to do um, live readings today so um, yeah but first I'll just talk a little bit and uh, I haven't been on here in a while, so um, if anyone wants to like, ask any questions, go right ahead. I'm available for that. One thing um, that I wanted to talk about that I just um, have been thinking and have been really like wanting to share or like just feeling that need to share, and I'm waving at all of you, hi, um, is just this idea that's recently like come into my mind that is true for me right now and I wanted to share it because I've been noticing with some people that they don't necessarily they aren't necessarily aware of this dynamic that I'm about to share for themselves so it's really hard for them to maybe process certain things or get out of certain cycles okay so here it is um, the point that I that I'm going to make here is just around um, the general idea of where you put your focus so will be your life. We all kind of know that. Whatever we are learning, whatever we're doing as work, um, whatever we talk about with other people, whether our friends, family, coworkers, um, clients, whoever, um, all of those things make up our life, right? Like it's just default. There, there isn't even like a spirituality behind that. It's like, okay, if you decide to study history, you're going to be reading history books. History is going to be in your mind. It's going to be making up your experience. Um, but I think that in terms of um, personal development and spirituality and just expanding ourselves, sometimes when we put our focus on something, we we attract it in a way that maybe we didn't actually mean to attract it in or we um, bring in an experience that's kind of difficult so let me give you a quick example i saw a youtube interview that i can't remember right now um where this woman was just sharing how at the beginning of a year like let's just say it was like 2014 and she was like just setting her own goals and i remember that the the perspective that she was like speaking from was was either religious or spiritual and she was like so like I told God like this year I'm gonna learn patience and I've never been a patient person and this is something I really want to develop so like I'm gonna learn patience this year like that's my only goal for the year my only um, thing that I'm going to really focus on and she said my goodness did God bring her everything that made her be patient so she had to actually exercise patience it wasn't just that like she was like okay I'm gonna be a patient person it was like trials entered her life that really called for patience and she said it was like a daily thing and it became like both big and small things and it was because that was like the intention that she brought in for herself for the year and I was personally thinking um, in the past year <laughs> I set some really big goals for myself to clear out some lifelong patterns that I've had around relationships, around family, around money, 
all of those things are so huge and so deeply rooted that I called in a lot of challenging experiences to push me and stretch me to confront those different areas of my life. And so those goals, those um, realms of life that I decided to work on um, came at me. And I think that sometimes we don't realize that some of the challenges in our life, we've actually invited them in. And this is not a way of like placing blame on yourself or placing blame on anyone. It's, it's a way of empowering you and getting really clear on the control you have over your life. Because where you place your focus is how your life becomes, how your life expands and how your experiences play out. Okay, so I can already feel my chi getting weaker after that little story. Um, and one quick thing I wanted to share um, that I shared in my story the other day without explanation and in a post yesterday without explanation is um, these words, which since it's backwards, infinite, peaceful, supported, magical, expansive. So this was in my post, this was in my story. And what I wanted to share about those today is that those five words are just keywords that I'm inviting in to my own experience to move with, to grow with. Um, some people call them core desires. I know that um, in an interview with Marie Forleo um, of a woman named Danielle Laporte, she has a book that I think is called The Desire Map, and it has this whole process for picking out your words, and they're called core desired feelings. And basically the premise behind this woman writing the book was that um, she had been making goals all her life, like, oh, I want like a fancy house, or oh, I want this expensive car. Um, and so when she wanted those things, um, what came along with it um, was like a stressful job and um, certain goals that were all like money-based. And so she didn't actually feel good once she had that house or that car or whatever it may be. Um, and so she started to realize that her goals needed to be based around feelings rather than around things. So she would say, okay, like if I want to feel peaceful, are the actions I'm taking making me feel that way? Um, if I want to feel supported, are the actions I'm taking making me feel that way? Is what I want going to make me feel that way? Um, if I buy this thing, will I feel more peaceful? Will I feel more supported? Um, does it fulfill that feeling? So I recently like picked out new words for myself um, because I realized I was living with old ones and those old ones that I had already worked with had become such a part of me and a part of my experience that I didn't really need them anymore. They weren't um, pushing me or stretching me or moving me or supporting me. They were just there. And, um, and so I realized like, wow, okay, I need, a, I need a very different set of words to focus on, a different um, mindset to work through, to work on my own goals going forward. And um, I was especially able to do this just because a lot of the um, relationship, family, and money work I did in my own consciousness over the past year since the beginning of 2018, um, because I, because I cleared so much of that out because I went through certain lessons and realized like, okay, I put myself in these lessons. Um, I was able to go, okay, like I figured that out at least whatever level of the, um, learning curve that I'm at at this moment. Um, I'm ready for something different. So what do I want to call in? So I just wanted to share that with you guys. Hopefully it helps someone. Hopefully it makes sense. And uh, yeah, was just a good little hit of information um, because I just, I wanted to share that. I felt like someone needed to hear that and it just, it felt like an epiphany for me, even though the core concepts, like we know, we know that where we put our focus on is where our life is. If we're negative, we have a negative experience. If we're positive, we have a positive one. But um, just like the level of that epiphany for me was big. So I thought I would share my perspective on what was going on. Um, so we have quite a few of you here and welcome all of you again. Um, thank you to all of you who've been listening for more than five minutes, however long I've been on here. And um, yeah, I wanted to see if we could do live readings. Does anyone want to do live readings? Thank you, Debbie. 
I think I'm switching tarot decks right now, and um, if you can hear my heart breaking in my voice, like it's real. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I'm not even like switching decks very far, um, but I have this old uh, deck that I got on Amazon or Etsy or something that was kind of like a vintage thing. It's, it was printed in like 1978 or something, like this actual deck was. Um, and, uh, it was, like, never used, so it's, like, this old deck that I just, like, bought, and I was, like, that'd be cool, like, just to see, just to have something that's, like, older than me that I'm using as, like, a, an oracle tool. I don't know. Anyway, I got this deck, like, last year, and I wasn't really going to use it or anything, but then, um, at my last tarot reading show, I could not could not make my usual deck work for me so the deck that's like generally in all of my pictures and everything um and like just beautiful so I don't think I'm going to be using this one right now and I'm sad but um I mean I always read as well as I can and I'm sure that whatever people need to hear will still come through but just so you're aware that my cards have changed right now So good to see you too. Thank you. So, um, does anyone want to do speed readings? Does anyone have a question? Does anyone, how do we normally do this guys? I've like forgotten. Um, yeah, generally, um, I just say, let's do speed readings. Who has a question, like a particular question that they want me to address. And then I talk for like three minutes with you about whatever it is, probably more than three minutes because I spend a lot of time talking, but it's still speed readings. That's the intent. Okay, I'm going to clear out these words, move them to the side since we already talked about that. Get my cards ready while you guys think. I have a yes from Jilly Bear. Hey, Jilly Bear. Should we get centered with our breath first, everyone? Let's go ahead and you can close your eyes if you'd like. Bring your attention to your center line. Just take a nice deep breath in and out through the nose. We'll just take three breaths here. Just feeling that centering of energy for all of us, whether we're here live or listening later. Bring all this energy forward together so that everyone hears what they need to hear right now. Okay. All right. We got some questions going. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Debbie, I like your question. Very specific. So Debbie says, I've gone through some big shifts these past few weeks. Where should my focus be? That's very like precise, concise, and uh, like a short and sweet question. So thank you for modeling that for us all, Debbie. I appreciate it. So let's see. Okay. And if these shuffles are loud, sorry. Okay, Debbie, I'm trying not to think about like where you are right now in life based on what I know about you. Um, and I'm just going to read like as straightforward as I can. Um, so the first uh, card that I have here is King of Swords showing up. And he is showing up in um, the reverse position. So he's upside down here, just so that you know what I'm looking at. Um, I'm seeing the Devil card here, right side up. And then I'm seeing the Two of Pentacles. And Two of Pentacles is also reversed. Okay, so what we're diving into here is um, kind of like, like you said, like your personal focus. We're also diving into um, a bit of a broader, some broader work that you need to be doing or that you need to be uh, feeling your way through is what I'm hearing, I guess. Um, I'm trying to be precise with the way that I present what I, whether I feel, see, hear, all of that. Um, so 
trying to work with that. Um, and, uh, and then we're also looking at how you are really balancing things because I'm feeling here that the key is balance. I'm seeing in all of these cards a, a bit of imbalance. Everything seems just a little bit skewed to one side. Everything feels a little too heavy on one side, a little too um, weighted. I'm not sure if this is going to make sense, but what I'm really feeling is like, um, it's almost like your energy is so hyper-focused on one thing that nothing else can move. Everything feels really rooted to the ground, like, but not in a very good way, almost like stagnation. Like everything feels kind of like stuck, except for this one thing. And this one thing almost feels like it's too early to get off the ground. It's too early to pick up. It's too early to put all that energy into. So it's something you kind of have to pull back and get some perspective on before you look at it so hard. Um, I'm feeling that um, some more directness on your part is really necessary and it feels very active in the world. It feels like the way that you express yourself or speak to other people, the way that you um, bring your voice forward um, needs to be a little bit uh, intensified. And um, that bigger, that broader lesson that we're looking at right now is actually around... Um, it feels, it feels like not, um, not, not getting stuck in old views, not getting stuck in old ideas of what you should adhere to. Um, because I feel like there's either a lot <laughs> or a little of like self criticism going on. Like, well, I need to do things this way and this way and this way and meet all of this criteria and do this and do that. And so it's just like these long lists adding up that, um, I don't feel are helping you. I feel that they're really pulling on you and keeping you from kind of um, expanding. So I think that your focus needs to be on all these other things that you're not addressing. Um, I feel like they need some like life breathed into them. And I do feel like they're very much in the physical world. I feel like this whole thing is very much in the physical world. So this could be like the people around you um, that you work with, talk to, are in relationship with you in relationship with and also the things that you do in your daily life especially with that two of pentacles i feel that that is like really that card is like what brought in that um kind of vision for me of of certain things um not getting the energy they need not getting the flow that they need and just being stuck where they are um and not really growing and moving okay i hope that made sense for you all right, let's see who's next. Sorry, I turned my camera around. Okay, welcome everyone. We're just doing speed readings. So if you've been following my story, um, you know that we were going to be doing them soon, and today is the day that they start. Okay, um, let's see. So the next person was Sunfree Star, and she says, Can I ask, when will I be able to leave and find my new home? Okay, so um, I'm asking that question in my head, like I'm getting kind of into um, an alignment with you, Sun Free Star, but I'm looking at it a little bit differently. So instead of when, what I'm kind of saying is like, I'm just bringing the focus to new home and home uh, to see what, what comes up. Okay, so um, the first thing that I do have here, I do feel that it's actually time to leave. 
I'm not sure if you if it's like in your power to just make that decision. I don't know if it's something that you need to um, wait for someone else for or that you're really like just waiting for permission. But the first card here is Eight of Cups. Um, Eight of Cups is really showing me that it's time for you to decide to walk away and to really um, hold that like resoluteness within you um, to make that decision. Um, because it feels to me like a lot of this is really just in your head. And I know that can really like suck to hear when it's like, um, well, anything to do with like moving or family, uh, relationships, just a lot of things that we ask when we ask questions of tarot readers. Um, but it feels that way because first of all, this is a cups card and the other cards here are swords. So this tells me emotions and your mind. This tells me that this is a lot of internal work rather than external circumstances. Um, Eight of Cups, like this figure, chose to walk away from all of those cups that he built up and kind of um, are representing like a structure or a relationship or something that they created at the very front of this. Um, and really walking towards something new, walking towards something new within themselves, walking toward a new reality. Um, they don't always know where they're going in this card. They don't always know um, what's next. What's next is really a question in this card. Um, but there's an internal uh, stability that I'm seeing for you where you have a, a sense of clarity or an ability to get really clear within yourself that those things um, won't really phase you. You won't be like, oh, I don't know where I'm going and um, I feel so nervous. You'll be like, well, I don't know where I'm going, but like I trust. Um, where I'm really seeing that is in Two of Swords. So Two of Swords popped up and is one of my favorite cards when it comes to um, introspection because for me it's like probably like the ultimate introspection card. I'd have to think about that. But um, this person is really thinking. They're really um, in meditation. They're really getting clear in their own minds and um, and they're weighing things through their own intuitive feelings. Um, this could be their gut. This could be logic. Whatever works for them is what will work. Um, so what I'm seeing here is that you have that ability to get really clear, to get really balanced around that. Um, and I feel that you need to because this Eight of Cups card is showing me that that decision needs made or that um, kind of like rip off the band-aid idea is here. Um, I'm also feeling that it's So I always want to say things as gently as possible um, and during live streams if I feel like stuck or like I can't say something differently I just like want to say it um, because I feel like someone might need to hear that um, and so if something uh, resonates with you then that's great but if you don't like something I say like that's totally fine you can just disregard it. Um, I do feel for you that there's a bit of um, indecision or stuckness where you're kind of just waiting, just waiting, just waiting. Um, the card that's bringing that up for me is Four of Swords. So this figure is just laying here, not doing anything. I love this card. Like, it's not about like just not doing anything. It's about a lot of things. But here, that's the feeling I'm getting. That's the feeling I'm getting in this moment that that you're waiting for something outside of yourself to give you that, to give you that um, push. Sometimes if we need that push, we can totally ask the universe, like, give me that little sign. Give me that little um, bonus from work that I need. Give me that um, healing of this particular relationship so that I can move on, move forward. Um, but so much here is just really making that decision, okay? Really trusting that inner self um, and what it says and thinks. Um, even though that inner self isn't always feeling aligned with reality, it really is because I feel that um, the universe is like always with us and for us even when it feels like it's not, even when it feels really hard. Um, it's still there supporting us and, and creating or, or maintaining that ground beneath us to walk on. Okay, so I hope that served you, Sun Free Star. I hope all of that made sense. Next is C. 
Cindy. Cindy Alvarez says, I have a question about my relationship with my boyfriend. Is it worth pursuing? That's a really good question too. I like the way that you phrased it. Because we can really look at qualities with tarot. We can really look at so much um, nuance um, and uh, get really clear about how we feel just in our responses to what a reader says or what the cards say if we're reading for ourselves at home. All right, Cindy, so I have some really beautiful cards coming up for us here that are really um, going to point to questions for you to ask yourself. So Cindy's question was, is it worth pursuing? Is this relationship worth pursuing? Um, obviously, I'm not going to give a yes or a no answer, um, although I might um, strongly lean toward one or the other. Um, but what we're really bringing up here um, are like I said, the qualities um, surrounding this relationship and surrounding um, what it could be like going forward, what it would be like going forward as is, um, and with the different energies that the cards are bringing in for us to consider. So Cindy, the first thing that I'm seeing here um, is that you really need to ask yourself what makes you happy, what fills you up, how you fill your own cup, and whether or not you give that away. So when you ask yourself these questions, it's really important to get clear on whether your answers are based in yourself or in what other people think or project or what society kind of says and projects. Um, because I feel here that it's important for you to stay aligned with your personal values. I feel like there's some connection here that's... Um, pointing itself out to me that feels very connected to like your mom's side. I'm feeling this um, uh, either like, mm, what is it called? Admiration um, for, for your mom and her relationships or for your mom's side and the way that certain relationships are um, going back in your family. And I'm feeling that for you, the value system that your family has given you really aligns with you. It aligns with your inner truth and what you feel about life, what you think about life, um, who you feel you are. Um, and I think it's really important for you to consider those different things from your personal perspective. Um, that's really coming in strongly, that it's like you, you just need to be really ultra clear about those things. Um, when you ask yourself these questions, you'll be able to see very quickly um, if this person can align with those. And if they can, that's great. If they can't, um, what I would say, what's really important if you're going to pursue a relationship for any period of time with someone that um, maybe feels like they don't quite fit what you want or what you need, is just to make sure that you're never compromising what you want and what you need. Um, obviously, those aren't in small things in relationships. Of course, compromise um, to certain degrees are, is, um, are necessary. Um, but um, I, I feel here that if you can stand up straight and act the way that you want to act and be that person that you want to be, um, that person will either align with you and keep you know, being in your sphere, or they won't align with you and they'll just go around you or you'll go around them. Like I, th I see that, with, that in relationships a lot when I um, am counseling people <laughs> around staying together, not staying together. Like things are either going to come together like this or they're going to go 
and just miss each other because the vibration is not aligning. That word is so, uh, like so much, like so much of a buzzword that we almost don't know what that means. Your vibration is just when you really get into it, it's just what you do and think and say every day and whether or not the things and people and life around you align with that or not. If they don't, those people, they don't connect with you. They miss you and you miss them. Um, and so you can just feel that that match isn't there. Okay, so I really um, stress that. So I'm gonna um, leave that card to the side now and move into the next ones. Um, the next cards that I have here, I feel, are representing each of you. Um, and um, the reason that I'm feeling that is because I have kings and queens here. And often, for me, the court cards can represent people, um, especially when I'm getting very specific questions around other people. Um, and that first card that I have is the King of Cups card. And I also have the Queen of Pentacles here. So... Um, we're not necessarily like one specific card in the deck and that's all we are. Um, but often we are fulfilling a certain role in a relationship or in our life at a certain moment as an archetype within the deck. And um, when these cards are showing up to me in a relationship reading, it's kind of like seeing it as like, a, like from a compatibility standpoint. And I'm not feeling that there's an incompatibility incompa here. So I'm really feeling that your your question is good because it isn't straightforward. It isn't like yes, no. Um, it's very much about making sure that things are as balanced as possible and um, really uh, meeting each other as two separate individuals um, from a really mature standpoint. Um, I do feel with him that there's some uh, withholding on his part and I'm not sure how um, extreme or not extreme that might be um, but withholding in any relationship is is going to lead to problems is going to lead to difficulties because we can't choose not to connect in our relationships it's going to um, upset their balance it doesn't matter um, who that relationship is with um, but if we withhold love and care and gentleness and kindness and all of those good things um, just because like we're too afraid to be vulnerable or maybe our past or a lot of reasons um, but if we're withholding we're really hurting that other person and I am seeing in this that that other person would be you um, but it could also be that he withholds from others and that you see that and that you see that pattern kind of emerging and there could be like that worry about potentially him doing that to you or that happening so it would just be important to be really clear with him um, that you guys need to have a, a very open emotional relationship a very open respect for how the other's feeling and for how you deal with each other um, the final thing that I want to say here um, is that I do feel that there are a lot of um, oh, okay I feel here that I almost want to say like this isn't the first time you've asked this question um, I feel like you have to do a lot of the little work take care of the little details for you both um, to really make things work and I don't think that that necessarily is your full responsibility so that's really all that I have to say about that I hope that that gave you some clarity I especially want you to return to that first card where you're asking yourself those questions okay all right very good um, thank you for that. Okay, so I'm going to let that go um, because I feel like I could still keep talking about it, but I hope that it gave you everything you needed. Um, let's see if anyone else asked anything. Yes, so now we've got Dara. Beautiful. Hi, Dara. How are you? Good to see you. All right, so am I about to leave my current partner slash is our relationship about to end? So again, we're not asking or we're not looking for a yes or a no. We're just saying like, okay, what does this look like right now? What does this look like right now? Um, where is this heading? What are the energies surrounding this? 
Okay. Okay. And also, I, I just uh, am totally not being callous, but I kind of just want to laugh how you said, am I about to leave my current partner? Because it's almost like, it's a very specific question. You're not saying like, should I? You're like, am I about to? Um, so that's uh, kind of funny to me. Um, yeah, that you phrased it that way. Let's, let's see what comes up. I'm really curious. Okay. Okay, Dara, the first thing that I want to say before I even turn any cards over is just... Okay, I want to say, trust your feelings, but don't take them too seriously. Um, the reason I want to say this is because I'm getting this idea or this image in my head of um, a Scorpio moon person. I'm a Scorpio moon. If you guys don't know what that is, just look it up. It's astrological. We all have a different moon sign. Our moon sign is how we relate emotionally in the world and to ourselves. Um, Scorpio moon can feel so much and they often like feel mm, like everything in the world hinges on that feeling at that moment. But then like the next day, they're kind of like, did I even feel that way? Like it's gone right now. So I just want to say like, feel your feelings and honor them, but also don't like take them too seriously or get too stuck in them or anything like that. Okay, so I think it's funny because the first card I pulled over uh, that I flipped over is um, just perfect for this. Okay, so I got the Nine of Cups, which we just addressed with Cindy's reading, um, but it is upside down here. So um, cards are different for almost every reading all the time. Of course, they have different themes and all sorts of energies behind them, but um, you know, they're going to be different. Um, here it's perfect that it's upside down because of how it's talking to me. Um, actually what it's talking to me about here is, um, so I'm going to say two different things. I'm going to say feeling too full of feelings and feeling a little bit emotionally stagnant, like things aren't moving or things aren't changing or like you only feel one way for a long time like you get really stuck maybe in uh like feeling angry or feeling happy or feeling sad and like it seems to be like a a space you're in for a while um but it doesn't feel like it's in a good way even when you're happy it's kind of like am, like can i trust this or like like what is behind this and i really um feel here that that just needs some personal addressing that just needs some uh, consideration, some work, because, okay, for me, this is, like, so random, so random, so I hope that it makes sense for you, or something, um, but otherwise, just let it go, like, maybe it won't apply to you at all, um, food really affects my moods, and sometimes I can't even pinpoint what that is, um, like, I might, I might be able to have sugar one day, in, like, a, I don't know, like, a, like some kind of a processed food, like maybe like crackers or something, but then maybe I have like a, a piece of a chocolate bar and I'm in like the worst mood two hours later and my, my whole energy just seems upside down. Um, so there are so many different factors to our emotion and I just want to throw that in there, that the body can sometimes be dictating our emotions, of course, because we live in our bodies and our bodies are made up of chemicals and things. So I just want to say that. Okay. So you've got to get more clear on your emotions because I really feel this kind of stuckness, this kind of discontent, but I don't feel that it's just an overall discontent. I feel that it's multiple things going on. Um, something else that I really want to say here, um, is, let me go back to your question. I have to leave my current partner. Okay. So, Dar, I haven't, like, talked to you personally in a long time, and I don't know where you're at or what's going on with you or anything like that. Um, 
but I feel like right now is a time for you to do a lot of solo work and I do not mean that that means you have to be alone or get rid of your partner or like whatever. All I mean is that you might be feeling that pull to do your solo work, to do, to fulfill that feeling. Um, the High Priestess came up. The High Priestess is lovely. She's one of my favorite cards. She represents so many things about our inner world, about our intuition, about being really, really aligned with source, with our spirit, our spirituality. But what I feel here for you is that it's a time for you to be more quiet, to listen. This could be listening to other people. This could be listening to your own thoughts. This could be journaling. This could be a meditation practice. This could be an art class. This could be so many things where you have time to listen. I lived in Spain for three months during my undergrad and I didn't talk much while I was there. Mostly because the other people in my class made fun of me because I even got into the program and I had terrible Spanish at the time. I left the program with amazing Spanish, but I listened and I listened and I listened. Um, I watched any show that I was watching, I watched it in Spanish. Any book I was reading, I read it in Spanish. I like ordered Harry po the, hot the Harry Potter books in Spanish. That was a form of listening, listening, listening very deeply. I was listening to my internal dialogue. I was listening to the language around me. I was listening to the body language around me. I was listening to um, so much. And that period was very, very important to my own personal development. It was a period where I, I was like very physically alone. Um, I was very lonely actually. Um, and we don't have to be lonely when we're alone, but um, I'm just saying that's kind of, can be a characteristic and sometimes we even crave that. Um, but what we're learning, we don't always know because the high priestess is like the wisdom keeper of the universe. So what we're really doing is we are getting a, in line with our wisdom, with what we need to hear, um, with whatever information life is bringing us. We came here to learn, we came here to do. This is more of a learn. Okay. Final card I have here coming up. Four of Wands. Four of Wands looks like a wedding, doesn't it? So it is reversed here. What this is telling me is that this period for you is about get is about getting really clear on what you want and making sure that you have the proper foundation for it making sure that all the different pieces of your life um, are creating a solid structure to build your life so I always like to um, talk about four cards as though we're building a house so not all houses have to have four corners but like let's just pretend that in this house there are four corners um, the four is a number of stability of substance and if you can ground those four pillars really strongly and get really um, rooted in what they are the house that you build will be as strong as you need as you want it to be. You can build anything from that if you have the proper foundation. And so foundation and structure are really important things here, but we're not talking about the physical world, we're talking about what you want, the things that will make you really fulfilled, that, that you will be able to say, I have a happy life, that you'll be able to say, I I'm doing what I want to do. I'm passionate about what I have and where I'm going. 
And I find it really interesting. This this reading is so um, so much about you. Like it's almost not answering your question. Um, but I feel that most of this will be answering your question anyway because it will be getting to those little things that will make you think, okay, that's why I'm asking this question. That's why I'm asking, am I about to leave my current partner? That is so funny to ask in that way. Not should I, not um, is it for my highest good, but like am I about to do this? It's like you're questioning how you're feeling. You're questioning what you want. And if this current relationship space is serving what you want, your growth, where you're going. That high priestess energy is what I want you to focus on most, okay? That listening. Okay, I think that's everything I have for you. Yeah, okay. All right, thank you. Dara, that was wonderful. Thank you for being open to receiving that information. Okay, I'm just going to take one more sip of water and then I'll get to the next one. Okay, next question is from JillyBear05. And if you guys are leaving comments, like I haven't scrolled down yet. So I'm going to do this next reading and then I'll scroll down and see everything else that's being said. Okay, so JillyBear says, career, question mark. All right, let's see. Jilly Bear Career. Thank you all for sitting through my shuffles and my resets. Okay. <laughs> Jilly Bear, you have two ten cards sitting here. Tens often signify the end of something and the beginning of something new. When you asked this question, I thought to myself, is she leaving her job? And I felt like because you had an S there, I wanted to say that you had multiple jobs or that you were thinking about pursuing multiple jobs. Um, but what I really felt here was that it was like this um, new life that you hadn't experienced yet was about to like break open and be here. Um, and it felt to me like you were balancing different things. Um, so these 10 cards showing up really make sense to me because the first one is, is really like a, okay, I'm, I feel so like happy and fulfilled with what I've already done with what I've accomplished up to this point and I can't get any fuller. So it's time to like drain away to empty out so that I can fill up again. And whatever you've learned before is always behind you. This, this, and what I mean, what I mean by behind you is like supporting you. Um, often when I do tarot readings, I look very carefully at the foundation that a person has behind them, at what they are growing from, what they're growing through. And I really feel here for you that um, reaching that top point feels good but you really like to climb. You really like to be filled up to grow with new information and with new experiences and new people. That's what I really feel around you. It's like new people really um, like push you to learn and to grow. And I feel that that is like an environment you need right now. It's new people. Um, I, th I think that the okay so I'm not going to ask for any qualifying answers from you right now I'm just going to talk since these are speed readings because um, I know there are probably more questions um, 
So what I'm going to say here, I'm just going to say, and if it doesn't resonate with you, I'm sorry. Hopefully something here will. Um, I do feel this card here that the leaving part for you is either difficult or like a hard decision to make. It's like you want to keep looking back. You want to keep that hold on what you have um, because it's like, oh my gosh, if I like sever myself from this, like what, I, I won't have a bridge to return. Just because you can't see what's on the other side of the bridge doesn't mean that you shouldn't cross it. Um, here, we need to get really open to new territory, really open to those new experiences and go, okay, this bridge looks strong enough to hold me, like let me cross it and go. Um, that leaving is always an important focus when there's a 10 for me. I feel that bringing the focus to how we leave something, how we um, make those bridges is important. So for example, making a bridge to leave a job could just be the way that you exit that job. It could be that you put in two weeks notice. It could be that you need to start training someone else to take your place. It could be all these different things. And again, if you're not leaving something, I'm sorry, this, maybe someone needs to hear this. Um, but making that bridge is really important. And you're not burning it down behind you, you're just crossing over it and moving into something new. Um, you always have, again, those experiences and that support behind you of everything you've learned and everything you've expanded through until now. But I feel that you've kind of reached your top point in whatever you're doing right now and it's time for like that breaking open. That breaking open, I feel for you, is like really looking at a few different things. The way that I'm seeing it is almost like um, it's almost like when you have side jobs, when you have all these different things going on because that's what you need to get through a certain time in your life. But I feel for you that these things will really feed you because I feel that those environments and those people around you are really important. I feel that you like thrive off of meeting those new people. I also think it's really important for you to take some time to get really clear on what you want to do, what you want Okay, I want to say this differently. I feel like it's really important for you to just take some time to get clear from everything you've done before. This is like a reset. This is like a break with the past for you. Um, the card that's showing up here for this is the Four of Swords. In case tarot really resonates with you, you can like get your cards out, pick this card, put it up on your dresser or bookshelf, and really just look at it and let it go into you over the next few weeks or months or however long you're in this kind of a period. But I feel that this, this card for me right now is speaking to me about the process of meditation. What I mean by that is that the process of meditation is a real time of filtering. Everything that kind of spins through our minds that we are trying to get a handle on in our mind during meditation, um, trying to process in our minds during meditation, it's like filtering some like rocks out of sand. All of the sand that's falling away, they're the things that are just the, th the, the small little things getting in our way from what we really want to get to. And like finding those rocks takes work and like actually getting to them takes work. So that filtering process that we go through during that meditation is either to get into the stuff that we no longer want in our subconscious or in our conscious world, um, to really clean it out and to really get like clean and clear and hear. And, um, and I really think that letting go of all of that work that's come before, all of the titles, all of the training, all of the ideas you had that you had to fulfill until now will kind of like fall away as you get clearer and clearer, um, because you'll, you'll kind of be like, who was that person? Like this really happens during meditation and this can even happen in the space of a week. 
I've been practicing meditation for a very long time and I would say in my first year of meditation I looked back on the person I was a year before and I was like who is that who is that person like of course I can identify with certain aspects and certain things but you you pull out what you no longer need and you get rid of it and you find a more true or core aspect of you that you want to come forward that you want to bring out so this might be a period where you're not quite moving into what exactly it is that you want to do immediately it might be a time of distilling that information inside of you that's coming forward to get that clearer picture in the future I feel like that was really long but hopefully it was just right for you um, hope that resonated and thank you thank you for your question I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down and read everything Sun Free Star said it resonates great you're welcome. Kissed by fire. I will answer you in just a moment. All right. Making so much sense. Good, 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 good. Miss Nikki asked a question. I will get to you. Don't worry. Hey, Delisa. Chu wants a general. Hey, Caroline. Dara. Good. I'm glad that helped so much. Chili. Perfect. Okay. Great. Wonderful, wonderful. All right. All right, all right. Let me scroll back up. Okay, I think I was at... Kissed by Fire. Okay. Hi, Kissed by Fire. Okay. So, Kissed by Fire says, I'm considering pursuing a career in entertainment. Acting and singing are things I love, but is this the path that is best for me? Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for asking your question. Okay, let's see. What a lovely question. Okay. Okay, so Kissed by Fire, um, a card just came out of the deck, and um, I'm going to share it with you. I put it back in, and I'm still shuffling, but I'm going to share it with you because the interesting thing about it coming up right now is that this morning, oh no, I only have two minutes left. That means I'm going to have to restart. You guys are all going to have to come back if you still have questions and still want to keep watching. Um, okay. Okay. So I'll tell you the story before this ends. Um, so the card that came forward um, was the Wheel of Fortune. Let's just see if I can find it. Yeah. So the Wheel of Fortune came forward and um, came out of the deck as I was shuffling. And uh, I was cleaning today and I was looking through an old sketchbook, like 10 years old, nine years old. And I had drawn this card like huge on this piece of paper. And I'd written little things around it. And something I wrote in quotes, which was probably from a tarot book that I was reading from at the time, um, it said, the more you realize your own control over your fate, the more you realize your own control over your fate, the more likely you'll fulfill your destiny. It was something like that. And I thought it was really beautiful because, okay, everybody just like pause here. I'm going to end this. I'm going to post it. I'm going to come right back, okay? Okay, so I'm going to give everyone a moment to arrive again because I obviously have been talking forever. 
So what I was saying at the end of that was related to the Wheel of Fortune. Hello. Um, and since the person receiving the reading is already here, I'm just going to dive right into it. So like I said, um, this little quote said, the more you realize that you are in control of your fate, the more likely that you'll fulfill your destiny. Um, the reason I found that so beautiful is um, because of the way that I have been seeing time. As I work with clients and Caroline is here and Caroline's experience um, sharing something with me that I once said in a reading um, really uh, brought this vision in strongly um, because I saw something for her in time that was like six months out and the way that it came together um, was very surprising to me um, because it had to do with like a natural disaster or a natural I guess that's what you call it um, yeah um, and so I was thinking like how many things in time are fixed that don't have anything to do with our behaviors but have to do with bigger circumstances and so this like vision came in this summer um, through all this client work through this story from Caroline um, where I really saw um, when I was like young in elementary school we did these big um, weaving projects where we had a loom and it wasn't like a huge like loom that um, like Native Americans would have used or like that um, we might have had in I don't know the 1800s that made huge quilts but they were pr they were pretty big though so like I mean I, I would say it was at least like um, like an 18 by 24 size sheet of paper like if you can imagine that that's the size of these looms that we had in our class and so when I got to use it um, we had thread where so there are all of these like wires or not wires but like there are certain threads running, um, I guess I'll call it vertically, um, anyone that like knows how to weave, sorry if I'm using like all the wrong language, but then we had um, a thread or a, a piece of yarn or whatever um, that went horizontally across it and we were weaving in and out of it. And I've, I've been like really just seeing time as this big loom where there are these long vertical threads, where there are these events and experiences and energies that we're kind of playing through so we have control over this thread we have control over so much of it but also not all of it so there are certain things that i think are definitely in our path there there are things that i think are only in our path if we try or if we manifest them um if we work toward them um so i think that these things are so complex and interesting um, but I'm going to go ahead and get back to Kiss by Fire's question. Um, anyone else whose questions were in the last um, video, just go ahead and type your question here and I will get to it. Um, I think there was at least one other person. Okay, so I just wanted to share that with you um, because I feel that maybe Kiss by Fire, that will serve you to just think of life like that, to think of fate and destiny and maybe research them a little bit and what different people think, what different spiritual thinkers um, say. Okay, so we have a lot here, Kiss by Fire, around um, really being in line with your own personal truth really feeling like the hero of your own story and um, a lot of um, energy around feeling emotionally contented feeling fulfilled but not just fulfilled like content like I really want to stress that word here so we'll get to that um, but let me start at the beginning so the first card that is showing up for me is two of cups and what I feel here is that this card is representing the way you see yourself. So this is like almost like a mirror image, even though it's not. Um, but I feel that um, when this card shows up, we're really being asked to see ourselves clearly and to speak our truth. The throat chakra comes up with this card for me so much, whether or not we're actively expressing ourselves. It's so interesting that you said something about singing because 
The throat chakra is all about singing. The throat chakra is all about acting. Love you too, Caroline. Um, and expressing ourselves. Um, and I guess I shouldn't say all about, but so connected to. You can do so much throat chakra work through those things. Um, the throat chakra, I feel, often needs great healing for singers, for actors, for um, anyone who is really using their voice a lot and um, trying to do it in an authentic way, in a way that honors them, in a way that honors their truth, um, who they are, what they want. And um, I want to say here that of course that direction is worth pursuing for you. I can't remember how you phrased your question now, but I feel that this language is appropriate. Um, if that's part of your core truth, if that's part of what you see in yourself, if that's part of what would be honoring yourself to try that, um, to move toward that destiny as an active mover with that um, piece of uh, thread. Um, and I'll, and I'll just say again, so when I, when I talk about the throat chakra, if, if people don't know what the throat chakra is, is um, it's about our personal expression. Um, the energy center is just believed to be right here. Um, and it's about moving energy through our body in a way that expresses ourselves, expresses who we are, um, expresses our truth expresses our feelings. Feelings is a big thing here, huge thing here. And this card was showing up for me reversed. Reversed is not a bad thing, it's not a good thing, it's not really anything. It just gives me another um, piece of language to interpret when I'm doing readings. And here for me, it's just I feel asking you to bring that energy through more clearly of am I expressing myself? Am I expressing myself the way that I want to? How clearly am I seeing myself in the mirror? Am I honoring her? Okay. The next card for me is about leadership. So we have the Six of Wands showing up and I'm really seeing it from this um, perspective of wanting to be seen, wanting to be applauded, wanting to be celebrated, and that's beautiful. That's wonderful. Um, leaders come in all shapes and forms. Um, we might not necessarily go, oh, they're an actor, they're a leader. Um, oh, they sing like they're a leader. But you are. Anytime you are um, doing anything in front of other people, you're leading them. It doesn't matter if you are serving them at a restaurant, the way that you speak and act is leadership because people are seeing you. It doesn't matter if you're a member of a team. Um, when you get to work, if you're in a bad attitude, like if you're in, if you have a bad attitude, um, the people around you on your team, like that behavior is right next to them. And it's side to side leadership. Yes, like there's no authority there, but there is um, a path that you are leading people down all of the time, all of the time. And, um, and so the way that you carry yourself, the way that your energy is, is, is really important, is really um, speaking to the um, way you wanna be seen, to the path that you're creating. So I feel that for you, it's very important to be seen the way you wanna be seen. And what I want you to think about is, um, how you're being seen as you move toward this path. Because I feel that you are moving toward this path anyway. Um, I know that you're asking like, is this worth pursuing? Is this path worth pursuing? I feel that you're already pursuing it, even if it's only in your mind. So getting really clear on how you see yourself and letting other people see you the way that you want to, like dictating what your image is. Um, I don't really, know how else to say it besides like branding so like branding is like really important for people on Instagram that have businesses people like me um, because we decide how we want to be 
in front of the camera, on the screen, in front of people. Um, even if your brand is in person, even if you're um, an actress or a singer, um, it's very important to get clear on what your image is, um, on, on what it is that you are representing. Um, some people in their businesses, they decide to have a complete like persona where when the camera turns on, there's someone else. Um, my persona, for instance, is just me. Like I am not an actor. I'm not um, really capable of that. So for me, it was like, well, of course my branding is just going to be who I am because like I can't really do anything differently. Um, and the choices I make around that are just, does this align with me? Does this align with me? Does this align with me? Um, and that could mean that it dictates what roles that you go for. Um, all sorts of things. So just really um, settle into how you want to be seen and if this goal slash dream is going to fulfill how you want to be seen and how you want to lead in the world. Okay, so the final card I want to talk about um, is I'm actually getting some information that I don't know how to talk about. Um, so hopefully this makes sense for you or for someone here. Um, but um, I'm just going to go into it, okay? card that I'm getting here is Six of Cups. And this really brought in that kind of emotional contentment idea. I feel personally that a lot of the reasons behind your desires to be an actor or singer um, they feel for me like you want to express yourself in ways that you either never have or never have been allowed to. It's like there's this like flowering inside of you of different emotions and you've never been able to go and pick those flowers and present them to anyone. You've never been able to get those personalities those emotions, those situations and stories out of you and it feels that you feel you can express yourself through those mediums like um, like acting, like singing, putting on that mask of someone else, um, reading a whole script and getting into a certain character and really understanding who they are because there's something inside of you, there's a flower that needs picked and brought forward and like shown or given away in some way and I feel that that will actually be very healing for you I feel that it will be healing for your childhood for your past for the way that you've grown up I don't know if that makes sense for you but I hope it does and I feel that that emotional contentment again is that is a word is a phrase that I want to stress I want to stress that feeling I have of desiring that emotional contentment, of getting to that place of almost like peace. I'm not, I'm not saying like it's bad that like these flowers are in you, but I don't think it's good that they haven't been expressed, that they haven't been shown or picked and used in some way. Um, The only time I ever acted was in a play um, and I got to be like a princess and I got to be really um, like haughty and like arrogant and just like everyone was my servant that was on that stage and it was really fun to play. It was so much fun and it was so rewarding to like get into an energy that wasn't my own, but that was an energy that I could own. And I feel that it brought so much like power and so much expression that my emotional contentment to this day is still affected by that, is still affected by um, expressing myself in a way that was just really fun, really wonderful. And, um, Yeah, I just think you need that that expression. So I hope that you go for this. I hope that you do something that, that helps to kind of pick those flowers and bring those forward. 
All right, so I hope that all that made sense for you. And Kaylin, hi, if you're still here, I love you. Um, hi, Delisa, how are you? Yes, you can have a general, of course. The moon just moved into Leo right now. I just got a notification on my phone. I think that's perfect, Delisa. All right. Moons and Leo, let's go. Yay, good. I'm so glad. You're welcome. My pleasure. Okay, Delisa. Thank you all again for waiting while I get centered. I just want to do my best for everyone. So sometimes I need a second. Okay. And also I think this is the last reading. Okay, Delisa, let's see what's going on. What? Okay. <laughs> okay, Delisa, these are your first two cards. <laughs> One, two. One, two. Of course, you're dying your hair right now. <laughs> okay, so just for everyone else that maybe doesn't know tarot, Delisa knows tarot. She reads tarot, I think, like for herself, so she's used to the deck. This is um, Major Arcana 1, and this is Major Arcana 2, and they literally showed up 1 and 2, so awesome. Absolutely amazing. All right, um, so Delisa, um, we're getting into big energies right now, right? Because we're in Major Arcana, because we're in this really um, strong energy. Um, we know that when Major Arcana shows up, uh, we might have some really big growth going on or some really big internal work going on or some really big life events going on, just like big, like we're thinking big. And um, just since I've read for you quite a lot, um, I know that you have had big stuff this year and that this, this is a big year, like 2018, like you and I are both on the same page where we're like, all right, this... This year is big. This year is huge. Um, so your lessons have just been like skyrocketing you, right? And really pushing you. What I'm feeling right now for you is like this huge like coming into power. And um, like I'm all about being powerful, but like um, I'm feeling this for you on another level, okay? I'm not just saying like you need to be more empowered. Like I feel like you have reached a new, a brand new level of power within yourself and outside of yourself. I feel like you have a greater command of your life right now um, than you have in a very long time or that maybe you ever have um, on this whole like spiral of growth in life. Um, I feel like this path that you're walking, it's like you've opened up this brand new one or like you walked through a door that was standing on the path and it turned out that your next path was like so huge. It's like fields instead of just like a little winding path through the forest. And um, I feel like your work has changed or is changing and the way that you approach it. And I feel that, that your intuition has suddenly come into this really bright alignment because they're actually showing me like your third eye and all this brightness like radiating upwards. Um, I feel like this clarity that you've come into, so we're moving into that high priestess, right? Um, I feel like this clarity that you've come into um, has you more aware than ever of spirit, has you more comfortable with spirit, and has you really grounded in how to use it in your life. It seems to me that before things seemed random, and now 
things seem very in sync. And it's like the alignment, you see it immediately instead of getting to the other side and then looking back and going, oh yeah, like vision is 2020. You see it at that moment. You see everything lining up. I do feel for you that the larger period that you're entering that is more like um, a universal energy, um, you've had my readings enough to know uh, the importance of that um, because it's that energy that is kind of teaching us. It's that long vertical thread on the loom, right? It's um, an energy that we can really work with um, or work against and grow. Um, so that energy is the hanged man. I don't know if you know, like like the hanged man, but I love the hanged man. So I'm about to tell you what I'm seeing with the hanged man. It's like one of my favorite places to be in at times. And he is showing up reversed, which again, who knows what that means when you're getting a reading from me, but I'll tell you right now, just letting you know the configuration, what I'm looking at. So hanged man reversed here is just showing me that bright intuition, okay? So like I didn't even notice him when I was talking earlier, but like look at that halo all around this hanged man. Since I'm not using my old deck anymore, or at least right now, like this hanged man looks very different. And he has, of course, that um, typical... Rider Waite Smith halo drawn around him, just this glowing light. And like, I feel like your intuition, your like seventh and sixth chakras are just like whoo, open and just on fire, but like in a good way. Like, you're not like over open all the time. Um, and I feel that that kind of illumination is here, that really seeing things clearly, really understanding things clearly. But I also feel that you have or are entering this really great mastery of the flow. The flow of what's happening around you, of understanding synchronicity, of understanding manifestation. I don't know if we've talked about manifestation, but um, I feel like you're understanding things about manifestation that you never have before. You're understanding that manifesting isn't just like thinking and there it is, but sometimes it is. And you're getting clear on how to use it in different ways when you need to and um, what you need to accomplish in order to bring something to fruition. I also feel like you're really letting things go. I feel like there's nothing holding you back right now from just letting like the river wash you clean and just like letting go of anything you don't need, anything that doesn't serve you. And I know we've talked about this a lot, but I really feel this huge, like, mother healing happening. Um, this could be on a more cosmic level because they're showing me turtles. Like, the great mother is the turtle. America, in Native American philosophy, is the turtle. The earth is the turtle. So this could be on such a huge high level. Um, when I was cleaning today, I threw out like a thank you postcard from a company and like I turned it over, like it was just like thank you and then like their company stamp or whatever. And then on the other side, it said love your mother and then it had like a picture of the earth. Um, so that's interesting that this is coming up now and that I saw that earlier today. You, you know more than anyone that People that I'm going to read for are in my awareness during the day, whether I know it or not. Like I'm experiencing things for them so that I can pass on information, so that I can understand things and interpret them. So that is huge, whether you see it or not, or whether you're there or not yet. You can tell me later. Um, and the final thing that I want to say to you The final thing I want to say to you, I feel like is around career or like your job. Career is like a big word, right? Job is like a little, so like take whatever one you want. Um, but I really feel that it's important for you to think bigger or to think like more, more intensely um, about the way that you're showing up 
in work, the way that you're showing up at your job, um, what you want on a longer term basis or on a more pivotal basis, because I feel like you're on the, you're at this moment of change that it's like any, it's like an, okay, they're showing me an egg, right? And like you open that egg and like anything could be inside, but you're like birthing something. You're like bringing something forward from the universe. And it's like an energy that is Delisa, that is like Delisa's life next. And I feel that this magician and high priestess energy, like that's one and two, like that's huge creation. Okay. Um, we've got one, the magician, the spark. And then we've got two, the high priestess, the, okay, I can say whatever I want on my channel, the vagina, right? Like the entryway into the world. And she is like that birthing process that can happen, that coming through, okay? What else do we have here? Not just like the vaginal imagery we have the 11 okay we have the 11 that is representative of 2018 we have the um energy of going through something and there's infinite potential on the other side of those pillars on the other side of that birth canal so this energy here for you is of birth of really seeing what's on the other side of that, of that new life, um, and getting really clear. Um, that final card that was speaking to me, I'll just show you because you know Tarot, King of Pentacles. I don't know if he's been in your sphere lately, but you and I are often on like a very parallel plane, I feel, and he has been following me this summer like crazy. So if he's been following you, cool. If he hasn't, maybe just like look at him, read about him, think about him, and just what he might mean in terms of I'm feeling that job, I'm feeling that career, I'm feeling that way that you are in the world. <laughs> wow, that's like a rough dream. <laughs> maybe it was a good one, I don't know. If you had like a real good doula. But wow. Yeah, I mean, you're in that. And dreams for you are always your signals. Um, you know that. I'm not telling you. Um, just for everyone else that may hear this later and is listening now, like, I'm not telling Delisa that. She knows. Um, they're your signal. They're your information. And then usually you get clarity later, whether through tarot, whether through a reader, whether through online, whatever that extra synchronicity is to kind of push that message through to you. <laughs> Pushing through. Um, so that's everything I have for you, Delisa, dear Delisa. I hope you're well. You look amazing in this reading and I'm sure your hair is looking fabulous. Um, so happy being in the Leo moon, everyone. We just entered it at the beginning of Delisa's reading. Um, that just means that over the next, like, what, two days, two and a half days, maybe, we're feeling more passionate. We're feeling more active, more capable, more fire energy. So we can often get a lot done. Um, we can often be more, like, feeling ourselves. And uh, creativity, being creative in whatever way that means for you. All right, that's everything I have for all of you. Thank you all for being here and for this extra little end to the hour since I talked for more than an hour. And here at the beginning, I said I wasn't sure if I'd have enough chi to make it, but I did. All right, have a good day. I'll see you all soon and be well.